Hi, this is Spencer with USA Gar Services. In a previous video, I had shown the uh, assembly of the deep robotic arm, and also I had shown how to move that arm using the tensiometer knobs. In this video, I want to show you how to control the arm using computer code. The first step is to make sure that you have the necessary software. Some directions on getting that software are provided by uh, Deept. Uh, this is the, the page that's listed on the box for the robotic arm kit. Um, so www.adeept.com slash learn slash details slash ID slash 31. And then once you're there, if you click on part one of the PDF tutorials, uh, this will have uh, directions uh, first uh, on getting the Arduino software. So on this PDF, if you go to part three, uh, it starts on page eight. Uh, you can go ahead and follow those steps and get the uh, download the Arduino software to your computer. So this is the code I have to move the uh, deep robotic arm uh, using this, uh, this logic. Uh, I've made this based on uh, some code that Deep had provided and some other things I have seen. So I have to say I'm not that uh, I'm not very proficient of a uh, a coder. So it starts uh, include servo .h, which I think calls the uh, the servo uh, library, and then you identify each of the three servos. Uh, my servo one, two, and three right here then we have our uh, setup and then uh, right here this is important um, so this is attaching the different servos to the pins on the deep board so um, my servo one this is the the servo at the bottom that turns the, uh, the robotic arm um, it's the, the horizontal servo, I'll call it. Uh, servo 2 is the next servo moving up the arm, and servo 3 is the highest of the, uh, the servos. So they're plugged into, uh, or the wires for those servos are plugged into different pins on the uh, adept board. And um, I, it's actually a little bit difficult to figure out what the pins are because they're not uh, labeled on the the board so um, the servo one is attached to uh, pin number uh, nine servo two is attached to pin number six and servo three is attached to pin number uh, five and i'll show you where on the board those pins are so i want to show this is where the um, servos are attached to the um, deep board so starting here is servo one it's labeled servo one now that i look at it, i think they do have the pin list that says d9 for servo one uh, the next one up is servo two third one servo three uh, the fourth one servo four which i have connected but i'm not actually using right now as also servo five and servo six so you can have six servos in here i have four plugged in but i'm really only using three so the one that's attached to servo one that is um underneath here and that's what uh turns this uh this disc that so turns it uh horizontally and then moving up this is servo two and this is uh servo three that's the entire um um, uh, just to show this one more time, um, so servo 1 is pin 9, servo 2 is pin 6, servo 3 is pin 5, servo 4 is pin 3, servo 5 is pin 11, and servo 6 is pin 10. After that, uh, I assigned a value for each of uh, these. So my servo 1.write, this is telling... Um, 
servo one that I want it at 90 degrees. And I'm doing that for all uh, three of the servos. I'm putting them initially at 90 degrees. So these servos go from, uh, I'm not sure if it's zero or one, to 180 uh, degrees. Um, my um, arm right now, their uh, default position is at 90. So that's where I'm uh, setting them to, uh, to start with. Uh, this is a uh, delay 1000, so it's a, a one second uh, delay before the loop starts. So here is the um, here's the loop that I have. So all this is the loop that's being run. And what this initial code is uh, doing is it just moving the, uh, the servos from one position to another and then back to the uh, initial position. So remember, my ser servo one was initially at 90. This moves it to 80. This is a two second pause. And this puts it right back where it was at 90. Um, so then I do the same thing with servo two. And then the same thing with servo three. And then after I'm done, so this moves the, each of them one at a time. 10 degrees from 90 to 80 and back to 90. And then to shake things up after that, I move all of them at once. So without having any delays in between here, um, every servo will move uh, from 90 degrees to 80 degrees, I'll wait two seconds, and then they'll go ahead and go back to, um, all together go back to 90 degrees, then wait two seconds, and since it's a loop, I'll go right back up here and start again. So I tried to upload my code using this upload button, but I got the error that the serial port is not selected. I look over here, I can't select anything for port. Uh, this happened to me on a different computer. Uh, I'm just using this computer uh, with the Arduino for the, the first time. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and show you what software I need to uh, um, download. On page 12 of the instructions, just after um, Adip explains how to download the Arduino software, uh, they mentioned that um, we need to install the driver for the, the deep robotic arm drive board. Um, so that is part of the, the zip resources, which I got a URL error. And I think this is because uh, my computer can't handle this type of zip file. So I'll show you what well, other software I have to download so I can uh, accept this type of zip file. So I did a Google search for .rar zip file. And then uh, this seven zip comes up and this worked for me on the other computer. So that's why I'm going to uh, use a 64 bit. I have Windows, so I'll go ahead and download this one. So let's create a destination folder where these, I believe it's where the .rar files will go to. Now that's installed. I'll go back to a deep, click on this, and I'm getting the same error. I ended up having to close my browser and reopen it. Once I did that, I was able to click on Zip Resources Part 1. It downloaded the, the file. Uh, I then clicked on the download and uh, Windows didn't recognize the file type, so I had to uh, click select application. It wasn't, 7-zip wasn't on the list, so I typed 7-zip in the search function. It did 
uh, come up, so I was able to view the files through 7-zip. From 7-zip, uh, I had to click on a deep driver, and then this last one uh, that ends in uh, windows.exe, a pop-up box that looked like this appeared. I clicked install, I then saw an error message, but when I went to Arduino and tried to load the code, uh, I was able to uh, select the port and had no problem. So that was the whole purpose of this. So I was successful. Okay, server one's gonna move 10 degrees, 10 degrees one way, 10 degrees back. Now server two is gonna move 10 degrees and then back. Server three is not gonna move 10 degrees. Now back, now all three at once are gonna move 10 degrees. They're all gonna move back. All right, this next piece of code I have is very basic um, all this does is it, it stops the loop from the previous code and puts every uh, servo back to the 90 degree uh, default position so um, the, the key right here is it writes servo one two and three 90 degrees and there's a one second delay and it just the loop keeps everything at 90 degrees i should try it without the loop it probably doesn't even require this probably you know once we set everything at 90 here, it will um, stay, but this is just something quick that I made to uh, bring everything back to the default position and keep it there. I just uh, uploaded the, um, the code that just fixes everything and brings it back to 90 degrees. And as you can see, it's not moving. So uh, operating as intended. So now I've created a code that's very similar to the, the first code that moved uh, the three servos, except where the uh, that last code uh, moved each servo you know, as fast as it could from one point to another. Uh, this moves the, the servos one degree at a time. So they go as fast as they can from one degree to the next, but since they're only moving a degree at a time, uh, they don't uh, get as much speed uh, going as they um, would if they went um, a longer distance. Um, so again, we have the library uh, servo servo dot h. We've identified the three servos, my servo one through three, and then I've created this uh, integer variable servo position, and I've uh, given it a initial value of ninety degrees. Uh, the pins are unchanged. Um, now, for the initial um, position you eat servo 1, 2, and 3, I've set it at the variable servo position. Uh, again, servo position is initially set at um, 90. There's a one second delay, and then here's my loop, and my loop is much more significant than what it was um, before um, because I have a little bit of uh, logic um, mixed in here. Um, so I start with my servo one, right? 90. So servo one's at 90. Uh, looking back, I probably could have skipped this because it's already at 90. And then uh, for this variable uh, servo position, I have four servo position equals 90, which it starts at uh, until servo position is um, 100 uh, minus 1, so until it's at um, 99, uh, servo position plus equals 1. So um, it's 90, and the plus equals 1 means it's going to increase uh, by 1, um, and it's going to continue to increase by 1 until it reaches, until it's less than or equal to 99. So it starts at 90, uh, becomes 91, um, 91 still less than equal 99. So it keeps on going 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, um, 99. And since it's equal to 99, it goes up to 100. Uh, but once it's 100, it doesn't go up anymore because uh, it doesn't meet this uh, condition anymore. All right. So the variable servo position goes from 90 
up to uh, 100. And then right here, for servo 1, we write that value. So the servo 1, servo 1 is going to go from um, 90 to 100, because that's what servo position, this variable, is doing. And then in between each of those is a, a 0.1 second delay. So this delay 100 is 0.1 seconds. So uh, servo 1 is going to go from 90 to 91. There's going to be a 0.1 second delay. They'll go 92. There'll be a 0.1 second delay and so on until it gets to 100. Then it will stop. And then we'll have this two second delay. And then what we have here, we have for servo position equals 100, which we counted up to until servo position is, I should say, as long as servo position is greater than or equal to 91, servo position minus equals one. So up here it was plus equals one. Now it's minus equals one. So they'll go from 100, 99, 98, and so on until it um, is equal to 91. They'll go down to 90 and that no longer meets this condition. So it's going to stop. Uh, so we're writing servo one equals servo position. So servo one is going to um, be at 100, where it ended up before, but this time instead of going up further, it's going to go back down to 90, and it'll reach that initial position. Again, in between each um, one degree move, there's going to be a 0.1 second delay. Uh, and then there will be uh, a two second delay, and for the time being, we're done with servo one, and we're going to do the exact same thing for servo two. So the only difference here is that instead of having servo one, we have servo two. So servo two, servo two, until we're done with servo two. So servo two will go from 90 up to 100 and then back down to 90. And then we do the same thing, uh, but this time with servo three. And then for the, the last one, we move all of them at once. And these four statements are the same from 90 up to 100 minus one, uh, plus equals one. So we're going up and then down here, going back down, just like we did before, 100. Um, down to um, down to 91. It'll continue down to 90, and then instead of before, I would just list you know one servo at a time. Now I list all three servos at one time: servo one, two, and three. So they'll all go up from 90 to 100, and then down here they'll all go down from 100 back down to 90, uh, and then I set a 10-second delay in between that until it starts over again. So servo 1 slowly moves 10 degrees, slowly moves back, servo 2 is going to slowly move 10 degrees, slowly move back, now it's servo 3's turn, moving 10 degrees, coming back, and now they're all going to move slowly together, and then return. Thanks for watching the video. The USA Guard Services, we have a lot of fun with robots. But we do have a serious mission to decrease ladder fall deaths and injuries through automation. We could use your help. On the next slide, I'm going to show components that would be helpful. If you happen to have some extras, please give me a call. We can arrange something. Thank you.